when I got out of uh, graduate school, I just wanted to make a lot of money. That was the environmental cue I got to impress the ladies and buy a car and get an apartment. And I was always quick with numbers, so I figured I'd go to Wall Street. And a uh, fascinating place, very exciting. And I quickly learned that um, pressure to feel successful was based on the metrics of people around me. And if they made a big trade and made $10,000 commission, I felt all uh, the more pressure to sell someone something and get a commission, etc. Um, fast forward several years, um, I had billionaires as my clients, and I, I recognized um, pretty quickly that they were no happier than, than you or I. And I met several that wanted to turn 100 million into 200 million and then quit, and five years later they had 500 million. And it was more of a game and an addiction than actual uh, productive capacity. Uh, I made a lot of money, and I thought I would always make a lot of money, so I spent all my money um, taking bizarre trips and you know living large lifestyle and uh, about 12 years ago I figured out there's a problem with with all this and I started learning about environmental externalities the fact that we don't price biodiversity loss and, and climate impact and pollution into our market system and I, I started to feel very bad about that uh, I learned about resources because I was trading oil futures and such and I learned that boy oil is not only gonna peak in my lifetime but it'll peak soon in the sense that it's going to become a lot more expensive. So I quit and I went and got my PhD in ecological economics um, and now I'm living on around $30,000 a year um, on a farm. I don't have a lot of savings but I'm surrounded by people that don't have high pecuniary aspirations. They're happy with nature hikes and, and playing with dogs and producing our own food and um, the key I would say is my girlfriend doesn't care about money. I don't feel pressure like sitting next to these guys in cubicles that need to make a million dollars a year just to cover their nut. Bubbles are a part of our evolutionary history. We we are prone to be in bubble behavior because we are a social species and we follow the cues of people around us. And if people around us are getting an extra house and an extra boat and they look cool because of that, we feel like we have to do that and then one on top of it. And then we feel like we've uh, gone up the status rung. Our entire society has been promoting conspicuous consumption and more stuff via marketing and via uh, media and television. Um, and we're sending this these cues to China and India to try and live like us and we really don't get happier with more of this stuff I mean I talked to some of my Wall Street friends that are have five or seven million dollars now and they're worried about how to protect it and they spend so much time worrying about how to protect it that they're not even enjoying their own lives so I personally have come to the conclusion that the human economy is nothing more than transforming natural resources into dollars and we transform dollars into brain chemicals or feelings plus waste and most uh, people on Wall Street just look at the dollar thing they measure success in dollars they don't look at natural resources as a finite uh, primary driver of our economy and they don't realize that wealth isn't what they're really after what they're after is the feelings that wealth gives them one of the brain chemicals we get is is dopamine from novelty um, dopamine peaks when your unexpected reward is at its its peak so to take a, a flight to Switzerland and go heli skiing in the winter gives you a lot of dopamine but it also emits a lot of carbon and and other problems so a lot of the fun uh, activities that we have in our society are, are very polluting um, and the other aspect of brain chemicals is we don't care really about the future. To most of us, the future isn't even real beyond this weekend or next week. Um, so uh, the brain chemicals of let me have a, a beer or a pizza or go flirt with that attractive woman are much more powerful than envisioning us in a, in a, in a world with slime molds and jellyfish only alive in the ocean in 50 years.